We are here in this great hall to emphasize, too, that addiction is a bipartisan disease, a bipartisan disease that demands a bipartisan solution. And nobody understands this better. Nobody has worked harder to promote this solution than Dan Cain. Dan Cain has been down in the trenches of addiction and up here on the hill advocating for addicts and, human and alcoholics longer than I've even been sober. Dan's the president of RS Eden. He's the chair of the board of Minnesota Recovery Connection. And Dan Cain is my mentor, my friend, and my fellow traveler. Let's welcome our first speaker, Dan Cain. First rule of recovery, don't believe your own BS. <laughs> Second rule, don't believe Williams. Um, my name's Dan. I'm also in long-term recovery. Uh, if I make it another 12 days, it'll be 39 years. <laughs> April 12th is also the day I got out of prison the last time. And uh, prior to that, I spent about eight years being a heroin addict. There are proposals floating around the legislature. Some have been passed out of committee. Some have been passed out of a house in this legislature that would limit access to treatment. All of them would have prevented me from going to treatment the last time. I was in treatment six times. Uh, the last time for a year, actually 13 months, it cost the state about $4,000. Last year I paid about $40,000 in taxes. So that's a pretty good investment, pretty good payback. But what's being proposed today would have kept me out because you only get four treatments under what's being talked about in the Minnesota House. Now, the author of that bill knows someone in Anoka County who was in treatment 19 times and so the person sitting down with him told him that he goes into treatment every time it gets cold does that person exist he might but that person is an anomaly you know go after the people that abuse the system don't make the system more restrictive for the people who need it The current administration has a bill that says that you have to be more screwed up before you can get into residential treatment than you did before now. You have to basically be homeless with no one in your life who supports you in your road to recovery under what's being proposed. I had a mother that was a tremendous enabler. You know, I never would have been able to check that box. I wouldn't have got into treatment the last time. Treatment is the best investment that the state can make in terms of getting a return on the dollars that it invests. There are studies that say that, they're, that the lowest, the lowest study suggests that for every dollar spent on treatment, $7 is returned through lower crime, lower prosecution, lower emergency room rates, lower welfare, lower whatever you got, because ours is the one disease that impacts on everything. Drug court, which is a combination of the criminal justice system and the substance abuse treatment system, they just recently did a study that said that for every dollar invested, you regain $15.36. 15, I mean, if I could get an investment that would pay me 15 bucks for every buck I put in, I mean, I could make Bernie Madoff look like a pauper. But unfortunately, people don't see us. You know, maybe it's because we have anonymity in at least the 12-step programs. Maybe it's because of the shame that we have for things that we've done in the past, 
maybe it's because we just don't want the hassle. But the fact is, most of the people up here on the Hill know somebody who's failed at treatment. Because recovery is, is, is not something that we wear like a merit badge. But each of them have had somebody whose addiction has touched their lives, some their own. And what we need to do is we need to show them that the William Moyers, the Dan Canes, all of you, that we're not the anomalies like that guy who was there 19 times and somehow they feel he did something wrong. That we're the norm. And the only way we do that is to go up there sit down and talk to them and say, you know, I'm what recovery looks like. I am what we're striving to become. A, a nation that is sober, that's responsible, that takes responsibility for who they are and makes the necessary changes to become someone else. As you go out today, please, please engage your legislators, tell them if you're going to cut, and they need to cut, but if you're going to cut, before you cut one dollar, one dollar in services to vulnerable populations, cut some of the red tape that we need to get in and to operate. Thank you very much.